Just a month ago, I was thinking about how Timon Kolosinski's 4.86 average, the first ever sub 5 Rubik's Cube average, was so ahead of its time, and now two people have done it. Who could have guessed it? That's right, Max Park now owns the second ever sub 5 average, and it is also 4.86. Okay, let me just say what I think we've all been thinking. Timon's 4.86 was so good that we all had a little bit of doubt in our heads about whether Max Park would be able to break this one, at, at least so soon. But then at the same time as that doubt, we all knew it was Max Park, and of course he'd be able to do it. We're talking about the guy that got a 7x7 world record so far ahead of second place. It is even faster than I am at 6x6, so let's just not talk about that. As always, we'll be talking about some of the really smart stuff Max did in his solves, and also some of the stuff that only Max Park can get away with. Before that though, I want to show you what I said in my last video. Max Park breaks the world record by 0.01, Max Park breaks the world record by... Well, 0.01 if you count the first time he broke it that day, he just broke it again the same day. Meanwhile, Timon is breaking the world record by over a fifth of the second each time because he's trying to stop Max Park, but it is inevitable and Max Park is going to get that 4.85 average very soon. So the way Max has been taking Timon's records always feels a little mean. But okay, this time he didn't break the record. Timon still has the record as well. They're, they both have the record. It's tied at 4.86. But there's two ways you can look at this. The happy version is that Max doesn't want to do this anymore. He doesn't want to take Timon's records by 0.01. It feels a little slimy. So what he's doing is just tying the record instead, saying, I want a world record, but you can have yours too. All right, but that's the happy version of it. What if Max Park really doesn't care about Timon and is just trying to get as many world records as possible, and he's gotten better at it. If you take the record down by 0.2, you make it significantly harder to break the record again. And Max Park has broken so many records, he's so experienced at this, he's definitely not breaking the record, just tying the record, so that there's more room for him to get another record. So call me crazy, but I wouldn't be surprised if the next world record is by Max Park, 4.85. We always say it's not gonna happen, and then it just happens. Anyway, congratulations, Max Park. Let's see what he did in these solves. This was the first scramble of Max's average with the two red pieces here, so he did the red cross. I know a lot of you want to see the reconstructions done with white cross, so we're going to start with white on where the red side was. So we're going to start like that, then do the scramble and it will give you a white cross instead. So here's the scramble I will be reconstructing on, which has the white cross so a lot of you can see what's actually going on. For this cross we have the blue and red pieces here, and these two are pretty much solved. So the most obvious way you could do this is by putting in blue like that, and then red goes here and D2. The only reason Max didn't do that here is because of this pair, and doing those first three moves breaks up the pair. So instead, what you can do is move red over here, ready to go in, then put blue on top of it. So the first move buries this pair, but then putting blue on top and solving blue will actually bring this pair back out. And if that seems advanced, well, this edge has been solved since the beginning, and so he tracked at this corner in inspection, did D prime, and solved it into its slot for an X cross, and then D prime again. There's our X cross with a saved pair, which is a great inspection. Funny thing is though, this solve could have been so much faster if he didn't mess up in the beginning. He forgot which D move he had to do in order to set up the corner. So he looks down and looks back up and then just keeps solving and still gets a four. But if you see the rest of the solve, you'll know why it was fast. So here is the next pair from inspection, and he rotates to solve it into this slot. Now, normally we want to solve into back slots to fill them up, but when you have diagonal slots, it doesn't matter because either way you have one front and one back slot left. This next part is interesting. I've noticed a lot in the past that Max does not seem to mind cube rotations. He almost like doesn't even think about them. So in this case, we can do this pair without a rotation and it's very easy to see. Then there's also this one, but he rotates first and solves it like this and then inserts it into the back. 
Now, technically, you could do this one rotationless still by pairing them up like this and inserting like this. I know a lot of top keepers don't do that, but that's just something you can do. Even keeps a cross on top. But Max just does this with a rotation, and then he has this pair. And what he does next is just complete luck. Actually, what you should do in general for a case like this is orient all of the edges. For example, double sledgehammer. What Max does almost ignores the edges, maybe because he doesn't know a lot of ZBLL, but does it like this, and then just inserts them like that. This just gives a regular OLL, but it also gives a PLL skip. I feel like a lot of times when I'm analyzing Max's solves, I think to myself, hey, that's not smart. Oh, wait, you gotta, okay, that was really lucky. Did he know it was gonna happen? Maybe. On the second scramble, we have this giant thing for yellow. It is almost solved, so Max does the yellow cross. I think you guys with white cross are good enough to see yellow cross, so we're just gonna do yellow instead of white here. So what Max does here is pretty advanced, and honestly, we're gonna look at orange cross later. It's gonna be really simple. It seems like top cubers always miss something easy on orange cross. Okay, the idea you would use to solve this cross if you were just solving the cross and nothing else is these two are solved in one move, but the orange one is not. So you could just solve blue into that spot and then solve the rest of the cross and then just put orange back in. And that's just a four move cross. He's going to do the same replacement technique for orange and blue, except he notices that the orange blue edge is solved. So he's gonna solve the corner as well. And if you just do that replacement that I talked about, you end up with this in a bad spot, and it's really not worth solving this on its own now. So the way Max does this instead is he faces this side and starts with an R move. What this does is it takes this into the top layer, and you can still do replacement with these two with the same idea, except now this is on top and it won't move. Put orange where blue is going, put in blue, and then put orange in its spot. Now you just have to insert this corner to finish an X cross. There we go. One thing I think Timon is really good at taking advantage of that Max is not quite yet is the difference between D moves and wide U moves. Because in this situation, the next best pair to do is this one and this one, but you will have to do a cube rotation to make it a good case. So instead of the D move at the end, if Max had just done a wide U prime, then this would have been rotationless. But Max rotates this way and then solves it from here. And this is actually important. You don't always want to force back slots to be solved. I mean, it's a good general rule at the start because it tends to leave you with more open front slots. But in this case, it actually is better to rotate and solve it as a front slot. It's a bit nuanced, but the reason is because there are actually things in this slot to look at. And there's nothing in this slot really to look at. It's just that. So by solving this as a front slot, you get the two new pieces in your front front view. And again, Max does not care about rotations. This one is rotationless. This one needs a rotation and he does this one. So he rotates like this and solves them like that and then has this as his final pair. Uh, rotates this way and then we have this OLL case and F perm. Ooh, not good, especially with the U2 at the end. 59 moves is supposed to be above the average number of moves you need in a CFOP solve, and I am surprised he is still getting fours on these. Max, you are crazy for not doing orange, because orange is actually a little simpler. We just have two pieces solved and these two. So the thing with orange is there's this pair right here, and so there's a few ways you can save this. You can just solve white like that and then solve green like this. So this is like the dumbest possible cross solution and it just keeps the pair and just insert the pair and you have this next. This is gonna be a pretty good solve. You can also save this pair by doing the same thing I just did except solve the green one before the white one. And then when you do that, then you also get another three mover here. Don't know if Max would have done that. And we've seen this time and time again with my analyses of the other records Max has gotten. If there's a good orange cross, you should just do it. <laughs> Okay, I think at this point, it's pretty much common knowledge that Max Park does not do U2 double flicks. He does them one flick at a time, which is actually worse than two moves, usually because you have to reset your finger in order to use the same finger again. So yeah, this is actually really bad, and it's surprising to me how good he is without double flicks. However, look at the end of the solve. He does a U2 with a double flick. Guys, we're screwed.
It's over. We can all just quit now. For this scramble, he did blue cross. And since blue is at the back for the scramble, I put white at the back. So I did this orientation on the scramble. And now we're going to see a white cross for what he did. For this cross, we have orange and blue going to go in very easily right there. But green is here. So we first do a D prime and then do these. And then red is set up easily. So the important thing to notice, very easy to miss, is that the first D prime move is going to connect this corner with the edge which is lucky, but you have to take advantage of this by also solving the orange green edge before you finish the cross to make an X cross. And that's what Max did next, which is as he solves red, instead of just doing D prime F2, he solves red into this spot here. And that lets him connect the orange green in like that. And then that also made and saved this pair. So he does this pair next, X cross into free pair. We've seen that before today. Remember when I said Max doesn't care about rotations? Like, come on, this is here. How did you see this? Well, anyway, he saw this one first and then he decided, okay, I'm going to rotate here, pair them up, U2 rotate, insert into the back. And there's two U2s there and he's doing them as single flicks. So that adds a lot of time. And instead of all those moves, okay, you do have this pair, it's better, but let's say you really wanted to do this pair. You can pair them up in three moves, and that is like this. Like, okay, I don't know if he knows that, but that is way better. I am better than Max Park, confirmed. Anyway, after what he did, he had this case, and then pairs them up like this, and inserts them into the back. Then he has this case, and what a lot of top cubers are doing now for this OLL case, which is arguably one of the worst ones, is uh, they will just do F, sexy move, F prime, and that gives them this OLL. And the T OLL is really good for ZBLL. Now, what Max does is interesting here. He does U, U prime. And, okay, I'm not sure what was going through his head. My best guess is he knows some ZBLLs for this case, but realizes he doesn't know this exact one. Or for this exact one, he's decided how he's going to do it is just OLL PLL because, um, okay, this is going to be more useful for those of you who don't know ZBLL. This T OLL, I've talked about it before, you actually can pretty much always predict the PLL that's going to be next. Well, at least when you see the corner pattern and know it'll be soft corners, which he definitely saw, then uh, you can look just from what's remaining in this block to determine what PLL is going to be. And if you don't believe me, just look at what's in there. I'm going to do the OLL and these are all the same colors as before, which is enough to actually deduce that this is a U-perm. So there it is, and he went straight into the U-perm with no pauses because he knew what it was going to be. I think the actual problem in this solve was that he didn't clap. I'm, I think if he clapped, he probably would have gotten a lower time. In the next scramble, Max does white cross, and this is actually not too hard, but there are a lot of ways you could approach this, so I'm wondering what you guys would do. Try it out before you see what Max does or don't, I don't care. What he did was R prime first, that solves orange and blue. Now we have red here, green here, and we just do replacements with red onto green. So we can do D2, and as we do the replacement here, pay attention to the red and green pair. So right now, what we'd like to do is have them move like that, have the corner move, so that they are gonna be a paired case. So R prime actually has two purposes now. It puts in red, but it also hides this edge. It's like an F2L thing. And then D prime, instead of just doing R, we can do U to place the corner correctly. And then that makes this pair. D prime, and then, um, I don't know how Max did this, but he somehow saw this one but didn't see this one. So everything I just told you about the red green pair, I actually lied. He was looking at the red blue pair when he thought of those moves and didn't even notice this, which is much harder and worse because now instead of having two free pairs, which would have been amazing, look, the rest of the solve is great. Oh, wow. If you just do that, you have this free pair. Insert, insert. Oh, this is amazing. I can't do right-handed algorithms. But instead, by inserting this pair first, then he has stuff that's just a lot worse. So here we have these two. He pairs them up like this. And I just wanna point out that doing this pair first, actually really interesting, because I think that's maybe the worst one you can choose. If you do any other pair, look, you just get this paired up and then this paired up. Max, you missed so many good things here. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. He does this pair and then inserts them like this. 
And then we have this one and this one. Good look ahead because that's a tough one. So he pairs them up like this and then inserts and then has this pair at last. Okay, and then we have an OLL that leads to a diagonal swap PLL, which is not the good ones, but luckily Yperm is the best one out of them. So lucked out a little bit at the end there. Max, the fact that you can do this at 12.5 turns per second and still get a world-class solve, Max Park is better than me confirmed. All right, now going into solve five. At best, he can only tie the world record average at this point. It doesn't matter how fast his final solve is because the fastest and slowest times get removed from the average. And as we all know, Max ends up getting the best solve of the average and let's see how he did that. This scramble I did with blue top white front, that way the green cross that he did shows up as a white cross. So here, um, what he did first is very smart and something I never would have thought of. So you can try to see what you do for this cross, you probably will not do the same thing as him. So here we have uh, F prime to set up the orange here and that is going to replace green soon. But first he does L prime and that sets up this pair which he knows is going to come out to the top at some point, that's very smart. But then on top of that he does a U move here. And that keeps this one right here because for the rest of the cross, he just does R and D moves, which means if this one was here, it would be very confusing. But if it was here, it wouldn't move. So he has his first two pairs planned from inspection, but not from working harder and tracking them, just from working smarter and adding two moves to make them easy. So we can just ignore this pair. He's already tracked and that it comes out to the top. So we take orange, put it in green spot and put green back in. And then next we solve red like this. And for that last D move, again, an idea I've said earlier, you could do a wide U move if you're trying to avoid the rotation for this next case. What he does next is he solves this pair, which is interesting because I'm pretty sure he knew where this would be from inspection. And if you just solve this now, it doesn't affect the other pair. So he doesn't do that though. He just solves this pair, which adds a rotation, but Max Park doesn't care about rotations. He just comes back and solves this one next. Um, and then we have these two next. There's also these, which I think would have been easier to do, but you can do these two rotationless after pairing them up, just do F moves. And then these two next. And of course, take a look at this. We are getting a PLL skip. So I guess today we've learned that Max can double flick, so it's over for the rest of us. You have to clap after a solve for it to be a good solve. And Max is just setting himself up to get as many world records as possible. 